This podcast contains strong language and mature themes. Listener discretion is advised. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Palm Top Podcast. I am not your host, but one of your co-hosts, Kyle, and I am joined by... The other co-host, Alex. You know, I'm getting a good feeling about this Toradora show. I think I'm a fan of it. Yeah? You, you, you think you think it's kind of good? I, I think it's pretty solid. You know, I could go for like four more episodes. Yeah, you know... It, uh... It, it, it just like I, I I feel a bit full, but like the dessert menu's coming out, and I'm just like, mm, I, I could use some cheesecake. Throw the dessert menu away. Bring up the main course. We're at the climax of the show. Oh and shit! And it's just getting started. Oh shit! Yeah, we are on. We ended last time on a ski trip of conflict, where on a mountain of emotion. I literally cannot contain my love. It is bleeding out of my head. Please get me to a doctor. <laughs> Definitely looking forward to. Uh, I'm not gonna call them side characters, but like our uh, our, our our side, eh, our other main characters, kind of kind of laying out their 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 game a little bit more. I want to hear about those tigers. I want to hear about those dragons and the 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 weird girl who wears masks sometimes, and the guy who is naked, and the that bitch who sits between two vending machines for some reason because that's supposed to be endearing. Next time on Persona Six, oh God. we're gonna watch yo, Toradora. Yo yo. I'd be so down. Shut up. You're getting so hyped. Is Toradora secretly a Persona anime? We've kind of skirted around it a little bit. Is it the secret Persona anime we've always wanted? We just need some like fucking weird bullshit with shadows to come out and like fucking (laughs) if Taiga actually gets a tiger and shit gets crazy Ryuji goes Taiga why can't you reveal your feelings and she's like you're not me. Oh my god like legit though like like for real, this is this is very much a persona plot where people are facing their own shortcomings or like shit they're trying to hide from themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very same themes. Very, very astute of you, Alex. All right, we're back from. 22 and 23. I'm in a kitchen now, so I'm a little echoey. That's funny because I'm in a glass case of emotion. <laughs> I am honestly emotionally worn out yeah. because of these episodes. I I remembered the big, big climax, which hit just as hard as when I first saw it. Like I the the Christmas episode, we knew what was coming. The surprise was absent, but the big confrontation in the classroom where the friends kind of tear down the wall of oh let's keep everything the way it used to be and they all basically go screw that and that hit just as hard but the episode 22 was just an emotional roller coaster as well yeah i i gotta say the only thing i remember from these two episodes is is really dumb is that they sell chocolate at one point mm-hmm. that's literally the only thing i remember I'm like oh yeah that's right they like they like the chocolate thing the the pigtails on Taiga. Oh yeah. Uh, so apparently I just block out all like the <laughs> the, the <laughs> great <laughs> emotional confrontation. But, so I notice a pattern with you. You remember Taiga's hairstyles more than you remember the plot. To be fair, like whenever they show Taiga, like a close up of Taiga, it is the most budget they put into any <laughs> shot. <laughs> the the um the, the silly Princess Leia curls. Oh my god. They're adorable. Oh yeah. Taiga took a hiatus with her mother after the skiing trip. Which really affected Ryuji because uh, he had a nightmare in school and just screamed her name out of nowhere. Because, you know, that's a normal thing that people do. I know. If if you woke up in school and just started screaming your crush's name um, and then your teacher covers for you, you know you've got it good. Oh, my God. (laughs) That was pretty funny. He goes to Kitamura, who heard that Taiga loves Ryuji because that was her confession to him as the... What was it? The patron saint of broken hearts. Oh, God, that's right. Mr. And, Shirtless himself. Yeah, Mr. Shirtless. And off the radio said, hey, I can't get over Ryuji. Please help. So they make up a lie that Kitamura is the one that saved Taiga, not Ryuji. And 
So that's Ryuji's alibi. That's their buildup. Minarin's not taking everything very well. Minarin and Ami had that big fight on the ski trip, and yeah. Minarin's handling this by focusing on her actual future as a goal-oriented woman and is working multiple jobs, running the men's and women's sports teams. Yeah, that's weird. Like, it's I guess that's little, like a Japan thing. Is it, though? Because Japan's, like, very based in gender bias. I'm surprised that there was a unisex team thing. So maybe that is a normal thing. Well, bias kind of uh, does an undertone for budget. That's true. <laughs> kind right? of a bigger a big B here. Cut. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that's that's now a thing. Ami is considering changing schools because the one person motivating her well, to no, stay. No, hold on. You're missing the most important thing that happened in that scene. And what is that? Is, is... The ghost story? <laughs> The ghost metaphors? I mean, yes, yes. The, <laughs> oh, God, no, we do have to bring that up. Okay, but what, right, what, so what were we going to say Rhi- first? What were you going right, to no, say first? No, no, I want to bring up the, the <laughs> okay, return, we're going for- the return <laughs> of the, 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 the UFO slash ghost metaphor. Long rumored, Like you believe. Literally, Ami embodies my feeling about this metaphor coming back, and she just walks the fuck away. <laughs> literally, She's like, screw this. I am done this. with your stupid bullshit. Just... Come out and say things. We don't need to be cryptic. We both know what's going on. You you feel for Minarine because she has some genuine like empathy and understanding and character progression, but she has been beating around the bush for so long that when Ami, of all people, walks away, you're just like, Yeah, I get that. God. And we, we, we got it, we got to talk about Ryuji's shoe throwing techniques. The the way to the way to get Ami to stay and not walk away dramatically is to take her shoe and throw it. He threw really he threw that shit like that was a solid 50 throw. Feet. When uh, Ami goes, by the way, I'm thinking of transferring because watching Taiga constantly get sad breaks my heart. And then what's unsaid is I also really like you. And then you get a shot of her feet and one of them is missing a shoe. So she's being half honest where she's saying Taiga makes me sad, but she's keeping a lot to her chest. And I thought well, that was also a, Ryuji's holding a shoe hostage for yes, this conversation. He's holding, he's holding her secret feelings hostage. Oh my God. It's, Are it's, you going to talk about ghosts next? I would rather hear love metaphors described with shoes. Yeah, you would, I bet. Mr. Fashion Guru over here. Hi, I'm... I'm in Oxford, and I want to date a bro. Oh my God! Stop. <laughs> there, there's a there's a big thing in the last episode you missed, and that's Ryuji having to fill out the uh, the form for what he's going to do for the rest of his life, and that really brings up a metaphor that people are arguing. It's like, wow, you really need to decide what you need to do for your life. When really, what they're trying to push is, you should really decide what you're going to do about this whole Tiger thing. Yep, it it came at the exact time. Oh my God! Like literally, like. I'm not, I, I wouldn't say ham-fisted. It was done with some, like, pretty decent finesse. But if you didn't get it by, like, the third time that they did it, they really hammer it in. We see Taiga put on the mask one more time. She sees the box in Ryuji's room again. She immediately goes, like, oh, did you, like, find out how Minarin feels about you? And oh, yeah. And Ryuji just immediately to himself goes, what are you doing right now? So he notices finally sees the fucking mask for what it is. Mm-hmm. And and you kind of get the rest of that episode from his perspective where he goes, I see what you're doing. I'm going to yep. play along with it. Yeah, sure. Kingdom we literally get to be in the eyes of every other fucking <laughs> character. Uh, the main Ryuji arc that comes up is that, yeah, he, not only the Taiga metaphor of deciding your future, he wants to go work. He wants to get a job and make money and support his family, who's which has been a very low-income family. But Yasu, his mother, wants him to not end up like her and it wants him to go to college and not get a job. So to the point of when he gets a job, he lies about it. And so we're starting to get some of the Yasu-Ryuji relationship, which is, frankly, besides that one flashback that's been repeated has not really been shown too much. And we get it a lot, especially in the next episode where Yasu starts taking on part-time jobs to pay for Ryuji's future college tuition and ends up getting anemic, passing out, driving him to a PTSD moment where Taiga has to bring him back. And And that's that's honestly a really good scene to show. I, I, I guess what's to come 
because like Ryuji really does want to take in that support from Taiga. Yeah. Like he 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 like accepts it, but then he like gets a flash of Taiga saying the same thing his mother does and he just tries to push everything away. He doesn't want an adult to tell him what to do when they don't understand how he feels. Yeah. He and Tiger are both trying to push away the adults to make their own decisions. What's interesting is that Taiga is trying to reach out to Ryuji and conform him back to what she believes he should be doing, which is what Ryuji did to Taiga when her dad came to visit. Yeah. So that that went down. So 23, episode 23, the biggest uh, stuff. Haruto's got a girlfriend. Oh, my God, right? <laughs> just, just shows up <laughs> out of nowhere. It's Has, weird because at first I thought it was Ami's purple-haired purple, blah, 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 purple <laughs> blah, 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 friend. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. It wasn't but the... It wasn't. It's just some... It's a girl we've never met. Romance continues off screen. Doesn't have time for drama. And, and then we get uh, Swirly Glasses, whatever the hell his name is. Swirly Glasses. It's it's like Haruta, surprisingly, is a few steps ahead of Ryuji and Taiga. And then Swirly Glasses, who has discovered his love-hate anime relationship with... Uh, She's so soon daring, guys. Yeah, with the orange hair girl. It's really gross. And Taiga catches on halfway through her question. She's like, why are you going after... Oh... Yeah, so it is Valentine's Day, and, and so, as in all course, Persona games, in in true Valentine's Day uh, form, Tiger decides to make chocolates for everybody. So then we get to the scene, the scene, the scene oh my where Tiger gives out the chocolate. All right, do you want to break it down? Well, all right. First, l- first, let's break down the scene. Then there's a couple points I really want to bring up. Okay. Okay. So Tiger hands everyone out their chocolate. And she she gives the final one to Kitamura, and she says, "Oh, I made this one. I gave. I'm giving you the best one because you saved me from the 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 snowy mountains and almost dying." And then Kushiata loses her fucking mind and is like, "Excuse me," and fucking looks at Ryuji with like this, "What is happening?" And then Taiga admits to saying something embarrassing. And then I think the whole group clicks. Yep. Which is really interesting. The point I'll bring up once I bring up after what happens next. Uh, then Kushieda pushes Ryuji to uh, stop telling lies and tries to get Taiga to say what she said and finally admit her feelings for Ryuji. Hard confrontation after hard confrontation there. Taiga gets away and uh, Kushida tells Ryuji to follow. And then we, we end the episode on uh, Ryuji answering, but we don't know what he answered. Yeah, will he go or not? So one of the very interesting things here is you have a lot of character 180s for this. Yes. You have uh, Kitamura, who previously agreed to lie. Totally cool with it. I'm I'm totally fine burying this hatchet. No, no I'm sorry. P- uh, another analogy: putting this problem under the rug. Totally cool with it. I'm supporting my friend. And then we have Ami, who just doesn't want to work with Kushieda at all. Won't speak to her. But as soon as you involve their beloved Taiga, everybody snaps together and holds the door so she can't leave. She's the the hardest ass kicker in the group at times, but oh, yeah. she often she doesn't see that her six is undefended. So when she's in need of help, everyone's immediately there. And that final scene of twenty three, where the entire group goes in and just does what's right, is like the best example of friendship I can think of in anime. Oh, definitely. It, they they have to basically tell her you have the right to be happy. Hmm. And that is just, oh, God. Like, that is the main theme of this series. And it, it, it it's it's held so true in this moment where, hell, even Kushieda has an, an arc here where she, she tells Taiga, like, listen, you have no right to declare how I make myself happy. Yep. Like, I will control my own happiness. And in return, so should you. 
go. Oh my god. There's a shot where Tyga's eye is an extreme close up where she's trying to be like, no, but I'm trying to help you be happy, Minorine. And Minori just kind of falls down in anguish and like the complete you see the entire shadow over Tyga disappear. Oh yeah. And then you cut and see what happened and it was Minorine bent down. It's such a strong scene. It, Even like, animation you, wise. Yeah, like, yeah just, you could <laughs> just look budget. at Minorine's hair. Like that alone, where she's facing downward and her like bangs are down, like you don't see hair like that ever. The minute we walked into the classroom and I saw the shadows, I went, "Oh, it's the good team." Yep, <laughs> it's the good yep. animation team. They were saving it for just this moment. Sundown, baby. Also, this is like the first time all all of our characters have been in the same room since like the incident with the like, uh, tiger getting hurt. Yeah, if you think about it. It's we had a a lot of isolation in the general in general just over the past like half of the series. Yeah, like, we're near the end, and I remember thinking, "Oh, part one was better. Part two is so good." Oh my god, yeah, I'm literally like, it's gonna pain me not watching these next two episodes because that's what makes this whole payoff worth it. Like this emotional turmoil is just like this nice blossom at the end. Next time is the finale. 24 and 25. Our last episodes, guys. I had what many have discussed as post Toradora rewatch syndrome, where I just kept thinking of the show. And it was my first watch. I was just like, there has to be a show like this. This show is so fun and colorful. And then there was no show like it. And then I'm like, oh, maybe the show didn't. Oh, nope. The show's better than I remembered it. Oh, so after this, what are we going to do? We're probably just going to. Mm, so. I'm I'm holding some things back from you purposefully that uh, may fit the same theme. And uh, I, I find it very curious that now you're saying like nothing is as good as Toradora. But I'm actually going to hold it off until the finale. OK, good, because one, I don't believe you. And two, I'm excited. Oh, I, I, I've had my mind on it for a little bit. I'm I'm all in. I, I don't know. The slice of life anime genre is just it's very appealing. But this like symphonic combination that Toradora has, this show speaks to me and I love it. Yeah, so I, I can definitely. Agree I, with that statement. I accept your challenge. Next time we're going to watch the last two episodes, probably get a little emotional and see what could rival the show. I'm going to just hide in the locker until uh, until the next episode. Hi, Alex. Hi, Kyle. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> we have to end it there. Thank you to Eddie Gomez for our theme music and Phil Vasquez for our cover art. Do you guys want to hear some more? Hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you know when we upload an episode. Also, check out other shows on Kitchen Bed Media. We have 102 Cast, we have Chai Guys, and we have a few more things coming down the pipeline. Ooh, what could it be? Guys, we are also on Twitter. Check us out. Palm Top Podcast, throw it in that search bar. You'll find us. Hey, Kyle, quick, best girl. Best girl? Easy, Sanjo Gahara. What? Spell that. C-T-S. <laughs> <laughs>